This chapter is an introduction to lipids. Historically, lipids have been defined as naturally occurring substances that are soluble in non-polar solvents. Typically, that solvent was hexane. And also, lipids are insoluble in water. This is actually an operational rather than structural definition. So lipids have been defined based on their properties and not on their structure. The result is that lipids include very diverse molecules, both in structure and in function. Here is traditional classification of liquids, classification of liquids as six classes of compounds. And as I said, that's traditional classification. And what is common to all of these classes of compounds, and actually lipids in general, is that they are synthesized from acetyl coenzyme A. So biosynthesis of all lipids starts with acetyl coenzyme A, and all of the classes of compounds listed on the previous slide are given here, and their pathway from acetyl coenzyme A is shown here. According to a more modern classification, lipids are divided into eight classes, and then each of which is further divided into subclasses. This is a better classification compared to traditional one, but it's less commonly used and it's more complicated. In this course, we'll be using older traditional classification. Triglycerides are triesters of glycerol and a straight chain carboxylic acid. That would be fatty acid. Fatty acids, as you will see in a minute, are straight chain carboxylic acids that contain even number of carbon atoms. Triacylglycerols are commonly referred to as fats and oils. The only different difference between a fat and an oil is that fat is a solid, while an oil is a liquid at room temperature. Triglycerides, of course, being triesters, means that they exhibit also great variety in structure, because fatty acids that compose triglycerides could be very different. Since there is a large number of individual fatty acids that could be incorporated in a, in a triacylglyceride, there is obviously a large number of different triacylglycerides. We can identify simple triglycerides and that means that all three fatty acids are the same. And if at least one of the fatty acids is different from the other two, or all three are different, then we have a mixed triglyceride. Most fats and oils are composed of mixture of different triglycerides, and then they in turn themselves are mixed triglycerides. Triglycerides are primary metabolites, and they function as long-term energy storage in living organisms. Some of the most common fatty acids are shown in this table. Saturated fatty acids from 4 to 18 carbon atoms are shown. As you can see, fatty acids, all of the naturally occurring fatty acids have even number of carbon atoms. There are a few with odd, but they are very rare. The most commonly encountered fatty acids in nature are those that have between 12 and 18 carbon atoms. And then second last entry in the table is oleic acid as an example of monounsaturated fatty acid. And in fact, that is the most common uh, naturally occurring unsaturated fatty acid. And then last one is arachidonic acid as an example of a polyunsaturated fatty acid. A common reaction of fats and oils is a base-induced hydrolysis. The reaction is called saponification because that one is used in manufacture of a soap. So in this reaction, a fat is converted into a soap. Products of the reaction are glycerol and sodium salt of the fatty acid. Sodium salt of the fatty acid is the soap. The actual acid can be isolated by acidification of the solution with a strong inorganic acid, for example, hydrochloric acid. An ion of the fatty acid contains a polar carboxyl group 
and the long non-polar hydrocarbon tail or hydrocarbon chain. Salts of the fatty acids or soaps form micelles or globules in aqueous solution. Polar carboxyl groups orient themselves towards the water molecules, so towards the outside, while non-polar chains are oriented inward. So polar carboxyl groups interact with water molecules through hydrogen bonding, while non-polar chains interact with each other through London interactions. And that way, soaps are able to solubilize non-polar substances, such as grease, by trapping them inside themselves, and that's how soaps act as cleaners. In animals, fatty acids that are present in triacylglycerols are mainly saturated, which means that those triacylglycerols are fats. In fish and plants, fatty acids that are present in triacylglycerols are mainly unsaturated fatty acids, which means that those triacylglycerols are oils. There are several biochemical pathways for synthesis of unsaturated fatty acids. In general, unsaturated fatty acids are synthesized by dihydrogenation of the corresponding saturated fatty acids. The enzyme involved in this reaction is delta-9 desaturase, and NADP plus and oxygen are the stoichiometric reagents. Actual substrates for dehydrogenation are coenzyme esters of fatty acids in animals and ACP, where ACP stands for acyl carrier protein, so ACP esters of uh, fatty acids in plants. As delta-9 desaturase is involved, the initially produced monounsaturated carboxylic acid is delta-9 unsaturated fatty acid. For example, dehydrogenation of stearic acid shown here upon action of delta-9 desaturase gives oleic acid as a product. Now, if an additional double bond is to be introduced, then second double bond can be introduced towards methyl terminus, towards methyl end of the chain, or towards carboxyl end of the chain. Mammalian enzymes introduce second double bond towards the carboxyl chain, while plant enzyme towards the methyl chain. So that way, simply by composition of the fatty acid by its structure, we can uh, figure out whether the origin of that fatty acid is plant or animal tissue. The second and third fatty acids that are introduced or fourth uh, in polyunsaturated fatty acids is always introduced one CH2 group away from the existing double bond. So double bonds are separated by a methylene group, CH2 group. They are not conjugated. Now, mammals may need polyunsaturated fatty acids because they are needed as precursors of eicosanoids, which we'll cover later in this course. And those polyunsaturated fatty acids have double bonds both uh, after delta-9 double bond and before delta-9 double bond, which means that uh, mammals need some fatty acids as essential components of the diet. So such fatty acids are called essential fatty acids. For example, linoleic acid is an example of an essential fatty acid for mammals. There are several nomenclature systems of fatty acids. The first one, of course, is systematic or UBAC nomenclature, and that one is pretty much never used in biochemistry. Common trivial names are frequently used. And here are some common or trivial names of some uh, unsaturated fatty acids. In biochemistry, abbreviations are frequently used when naming unsaturated fatty acids. There are two common types of abbreviations, and each type involves several modifications. First type, abbreviated type to name fatty acid, is to use symbol delta to indicate unsaturation and then number that indicates position of each of the double bond. So for 
uh, triunsaturated fatty acid, well, it has three double bonds. It would be X, Y, and Z numbers that indicate positions of double bonds. Another commonly used abbreviation uh, labels fatty acids as omega fatty acids or sometimes N fatty acids. And so it's omega dash number uh, or N dash number, where X indicates position of the double bond counting from the end of the chain, from methyl group of the chain. So that means that omega-3, for example, means that there is double bond three carbons away from the end of the chain. Omega-6, six carbons away, and so on. Here is an example of uh, diunsaturated fatty acid. And so its name, using systematic UPAC nomenclature, would be 9Z, 12Z, 912, Octa decadionoic acid. That name is pretty much never used in biochemistry. Linoleic acid is typical biochemical name. If we want to use some of the abbreviations, we can name this acid as 18-2. That means 18 carbons, two double bonds, delta 9-12. Delta 9-12 means the double bonds are between carbons 9 and 10, 10 and 12 and 13. And uh, second row shows variation of that. Or we can uh, name this uh, or designate this fatty acid as 18,2 omega 6 fatty acid, which means that double bond closest to the end of the chain is six carbons away from the methyl end of the chain. And of course, since there are two double bonds, second double bond is one methylene group, CH2 group away from that double bond. Or we can designate that double bond as 18,2 and 6 fatty acid. And here are additional examples of nomenclature of fatty acids or how we designate fatty acids in biochemistry. So first line is, of course, line formula of a fatty acid. In the second line, there is UPAC name. And then common trivial name that is usually used in biochemistry and various ways that we can designate that fatty acid in an abbreviated form. And here is that an example of second fatty acid. Again, same information and third fatty acid. If you wish, you can pause the video here and examine this in more detail. Finally, waxes are esters of long straight chain alcohols and long straight chain carboxylic acids. So they're called waxes or wax esters because chemically they are esters. Uh, waxes have no nutritional value, unlike fats and oils, so they cannot be used as energy storage. They form protective coatings on leaves, feathers, furs, and the like. And uh, both uh, carboxylic acid and alcohol that are components of wax esters have even number of carbon atoms. This completes introduction to lipids.